Finding deals to resell on Amazon with good profit and ROI, that's easy. Finding deals with good profit, ROI, and that actually sell, that's the hard point. Today, I'm gonna to share with you three ways that you can check or estimate the sales of any listing on Amazon, and we'll do it on a live screen share. Stay tuned. Hi guys, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson and quite simply, I've been selling on Amazon now for four years. Right now, I'm on a mission to do one million pounds by the end of 2021. Have a look up there, you can see my whole journey and as I document it, budgets, results, profits, everything. Look at that, it's really gonna help you out if you're just getting started on Amazon now. Enough about me or what are we gonna talk about today? Let's go through it. Number one, why is it important to estimate sales per month? Number two, I'm going to explain what sales rank is and where to find it. Number three, I'm going to share with you top method number one for calculating sales a month. Number four will be top method number two. You can probably guess it. Number five will be top method number three. Okay, first things first, why do you need to know or understand sales per month? Why is this important? If I were to give you the example, let's say for example right now we found a product that was gonna make us 50 pounds, 50 dollars profit and had an ROI of 100%. You'd be like, that is amazing, I'm really happy. But what if I told you that product has never sold? You'd be like, probably not going to be profitable. Or perhaps maybe there's another product, let's call it 50 pounds, 50 dollars profit and 100% ROI. But this time it's only selling two per month and there's 100 people on the listing. Would that be a good, or the 100 competitors, would that be a good product? Probably not, it's a bit too competitive. Quite simply, profit and ROI alone are not good enough indicators to understand if it's a good product. You need to understand how many units the product is selling because there's so many other variables. When I talk about doing deal analysis, I talk about the three fundamentals, profit, ROI, and sales. Without sales, profit and ROI mean nothing. So being able to accurately understand or estimate sales per month is gonna be key to ensuring you're running a business which is making you profits. One thing I do need to say to you is that sales estimations are based on historical information. They are exactly as they say they are, estimations. Why is this? Because quite simply, Amazon does not release true sales data and nor can we use any information provided by Amazon. We have to use it from third-party providers who kind of amalgamate it from lots of different data sources. So it is exactly as it says on the tin, an estimation. What you might estimate could be very different or slightly different to what you're actually seeing in real life. So just be aware of that. Now, quick question for you guys. How do you estimate your sales per month? Before I jump into mine, let me know down in the comments below. I'm really interested. Maybe you're doing something that I don't know and I need to learn from you. Before we jump into actually how to estimate sales, we need to understand one key fundamental and that is called sales rank. Now, before I explain exactly what sales rank is, I wanna show you how to find it. So let's jump on the computer quickly and I'll show you where to find it on any listing. So right now I've just loaded up into a Lego product and you'll probably see I use FBA Multi-Tool. Don't worry about that, you don't need it. It does show the information, but I'll show you how to find it without a tool. So quite simply in this product right here, we've got this Lego product. Right here it says this sales rank 95. Now this tool is just showing us, it's making it easy for you. So any, any calculator tool you're gonna have, you can see it on there. Now if you don't have a tool, don't worry. What you can do is quite simply just scroll down. So we'll go down now. And what you're interested in is getting to this section. It's kind of product information. It tells you a lot more details about the product itself. Now, what you're looking for is here, best sellers rank. That's what we're after. And you can see here, it says 95 in toys and games. Now you'll also notice there's another one below it. It says six in building and construction toys. What we are after is that one number where it says 95 in toys and games. And then afterwards it'll say, see top 100 in, Duh, 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 duh. That it might be like top 100 in toys and games, top 100 in DIY. Quite simply, it will always be C top 100. Now we just want that sales rank number from that value only, not the other ones. The other ones are called subcategories. I won't go into the detail, but just disregard them. We only want the top 100. So quite simply, this product right now is the 95th best-selling product in the toys and games category. So that is the number that you're gonna to use to help you understand or estimate sales. 
Now, the one thing you've got to think about or to understand of how sales rank works is quite simply, what Amazon does, it has multiple categories. So we have like toys and games, we have DIY, we've got home and garden, many, many categories. Now, what Amazon does is it basically sorts all the products in those categories. And let's just take, for example, toys and games. It will take all the products in the toys and games category and it will sort them in best selling order. So the number one best selling product, i.e. it sells the most, will be ranked number one. The second best selling product will be ranked number two, the third ranked number three, the tenth, ten, the one thousandth, one thousand, and so on and so on. So quite simply, the lower the sales rank number, i.e. one, the faster the product is selling because it's the number one best selling product. And obviously the bigger the sales rank number, the worse it's selling. So what you're looking at is quite simply where that number or where that product is in the sales rank. And basically the closer it is to one, the faster it's going to be selling. Now, if you ever see something where it's got no sales rank or it's got maybe even like sales rank zero, what does that mean? It means it's never sold. Because it's never sold, it can never be positioned in the ranking tables. So as a result, it doesn't have a rank. So if you ever see that, just be aware, it doesn't sell. Why is this important? It's because we use this sales rank number to estimate what the sales are for the product. Now, the one thing I will also add is that, let's say for example, in toys and games, sales rank number one in January might be selling quite a lot of units, but you can probably guess that toys and games in December are gonna be selling a lot more units. So number one in one category, the volume that's gonna sell does change over the course of the year. It's not a fixed amount, so just be mindful of that. But we use that sales rank number to estimate what the product is selling per month. Now, before I jump into the three methods we use for sourcing, one thing I will say is quite simply sourcing, finding deals, arbitrage opportunities to buy low, sell high on Amazon can be difficult and time consuming. And what I wanna do is quickly introduce you to Fast Track FBA Leads. This is a service that we run quite simply. We've got a team of VAs sourcing seven days a week, looking for deals from all the suppliers. Now, quite simply, what do we do? We put all these deals onto our web platform. You can see every single one of them, looking at that sales rank number over time, seeing the sales as it happens, seeing the historical information. And when you find a deal that you like, when it meets profit, ROI, and sales, you can then quite simply unlock it, access the Amazon ASIN and the supplier link and go out and buy those products to resell on the Amazon marketplace. If you wanna know more, have a look down below. I will drop a link to Fast Track FBA leads there. Okay, so let's go through the three methods now that you can use to estimate your sales per month for any listing. Okay, so method number one is using a calculator tool such as FBA Multi-Tool. Now, what I wanna do now is jump on screen and show you this in action to help you understand. Now, quite simply, I've just gone back to that product I used previously. This is a Lego product. Now, quite simply on here, remember this is sales rank 95. Now, what's going on here is quite simply, this tool is estimating the sales, and you can see it up here, for that product based on sales rank 95. Now, quite simply, according to FBA Multitool's website, they have partnered with someone called Seller App to get their sales estimation volume. So quite simply, what they're doing is taking that category and the rank in the category, passing that to Seller App, and then feeding that back to you and giving you the sales estimation figure. So right now it's saying between 1,000 to 100, 1,300. So that is one simple way you can use by using a tool such as FBA Multitool. Now, one thing I will say is if you are interested in FBA Multi-Tool, have a look down the link down below, but also as well, up above, I'll drop you a how-to guide on how to use it, where I document what we do when we use FBA Multi-Tool and my exact deal analysis process step-by-step. Step. So hopefully that will speed you up in finding deals. Okay, method number two. Now, quite simply, this is using something called the Jungle Scout Free Sales Estimator. Now, this is a website you can go to provided by Jungle Scout, which allows you to put in the you know, marketplace, the category, and the rank and see the sales. So jump back on the computer now and go through that. So quite simply, let's just go to Google and type in Jungle Scout Free Estimator. You just type Jungle Scout Estimator. So there we go, right here, Jungle Scout Estimator. Let's click on that, load that up. 
So if you want to know how to get into the estimator just from the main site, just go to resources and then sales estimator. So it's right there. Now, quite simply here, we've got the Jungle Scout sales estimator, what we're looking to do. So let's just say, for example, this product here, we are sales rank 95. What we're going to do is put in sales rank 95. We're going to choose the marketplace. So we're United Kingdom and product category, remember toys and games. And then let's click estimate sales. What's that going to do? It's going to go through and take that information and estimate the sales. So quite simply, it's now come out 4,170. So it's saying that this product is 4,170 sales per month for that listing. So remember, FBA Multi-Tool is 1,000 to 1,300. This is now saying 4,000 to 4,170. Quite a big difference there. Okay, so the third and the final method which we're going to use is something called Keeper. Reading the Keeper charts to allow you to estimate the sales in a month. Now, the one thing which I'm going to say for you is this generally doesn't work for estimating sales per month over about 20 units. What I generally say, if you think a listing is doing more than 20 sales per month, I'd probably say go with one of the tools. It's probably going to be a more accurate figure. But under 20 sales a month, this method is amazing. It's very good for looking at slow selling items. Why? Because you can literally count the sales. You can see them happening as they go. Now, quite simply, what does Keeper do? Keeper is a Chrome extension add-on that does cost about 15 euros a month. But quite simply, what does it do? It records that sales rank number. Remember the 95 we had on the Lego? It will record that over time and it will show that on the graph. So it will record it going up and down, up and down over time. Now, quite simply, when you're doing more than about 20 sales per month, the frequency of those up and downs, it just doesn't really happen too much. But when you're doing less than 20 sales a month, you can clearly see the up and downs. And what you can do is you can count the number of drops that it has and estimate how many sales per month it's doing. So we'll jump on now and do an example of whereby it's over 20 sales a month and you can see what the graph looks like and see, well, I probably wouldn't use it. But also as well, I'll show you an example of when you can see the graph and as a result, when you would want to use the Keeper method because it is a great method for slower selling items. Let's jump on now. Okay, so first things first, I've just loaded up here a Bassett's multivitamin. Now, quite simply, FB Multi Tool is showing that 140, and I want to show you an example of one whereby it's showing it a bit too fast. So let's scroll down and have a look at the Keeper chart now. So this is the Keeper chart now. And if I kind of just take a screenshot, and what I'll try and do is zoom in. So quite simply, what am I looking at? I'm looking at this top box here, and I'm looking at this green line. And what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to see the drops. Now, there is a really interesting hack that some people use, which is called hovering in statistics and seeing this drops for month 70. I really avoid doing that. So you want to kind of see it manually. So quite simply, what we're looking for is changes in the sales rank, i.e. every time that sales rank goes down, not up, but down, would indicate a sale. Now, the interesting thing about this is this product is in you know, the FBA Multi Tool saying about 140. It's probably doing that, if not more. Over the course of one month, what you're going to see is, let's say, for example, here, if we just do February to March, over the course of that time, there's probably going to be less than 140 drops. Now, you can't count the drops on here because we can't say. Now, let's say, for example, even if this product was sales rank number one, the whole of the month, there would be no drops. Because there are no drops, it shows you that the counting the drops method doesn't work for anything over a high volume of sales. I simply, because sales rank number one, we know sells more than one sale per month, it's gonna sell a lot, lot more. So if you just think about sales rank one, if it was the whole month, you would do one. You cannot use counting the drop methods for high volume items. But let's now jump over for an example of a low volume item where you can count the drops and how this method does work. Right, okay, so now I jumped over to this product here, and this is a product whereby the sales estimator is saying like five, less than five sales per month. So let's scroll down to the keeper chart and have a look now. Let's go down, and quite simply, we've got the keeper chart. I'll just zoom in to make it easier for you. Okay, so again, I'm gonna be looking at this top graph here. Okay, so I've just taken a screenshot here to make it easier to annotate what's going on. Now, quite simply, what am I looking at? I'm looking at this top box here, so this top one here, and quite simply, what I'm going to be looking at is I'm going to be looking at this green line that is doing this. 
that's what I'm going to be monitoring. Now, quite simply, what am I going to be looking at on that? Well, quite simply, as I said before, I'm going to be looking for drops. So what we can see is if we have a look, we could say there's a drop here, there's maybe another drop here, another drop here, another one here, another one here, here, and here. Every time that sales rank goes down, that's what I'm interested in. Now, there's quite a few drops there. Now, quite simply is to say that you could look at that and say that's what you're after. This isn't an exact science. But generally what we're looking for is every time that that sales rank goes down, what you're going to see is that because it's gone down, let's say, for example, we had a product which was sales rank number 10, and then we had another product sales rank number 11. Now for the product number 11 now becomes sales rank number 10, and then obviously 10 now becomes sales rank number 11, means that sales have got to happen because it means that this product, which was 11 now going to 10, is now selling more per month, i.e. it's improving in its sales rank position than what was number 10. So quite simply, every time we see that downward movement on that graph is implying, not guaranteeing, implying that it's gonna be at least one sell, if not more. So this is why we say, use this method for under 20 sales a month, but don't use it for anything else because we can't say if that's, that drop is gonna be one sale or multiple sales. It could be one or it could be 10, we don't know. And that makes estimating sales per month so much harder. But when you're looking at sales a month under 20, this method works really, really well. And quite simply, what you're looking for is these beautiful arches, up, down, up, down, up, down. And on the graph, they're gonna look like this. So There's a really good way of checking low selling item quite accurately and seeing when they sell for each month. Now, what I will say is hopefully that has been useful for you. If it has, give me a thumbs up. It just lets me know that you like this content and I will make more of it. What I will say as well, if you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a link around here to some Keeper training. That method number three I talked about was very much using Keeper and I really believe understanding Keeper is key to growing a great Amazon business because you understand how to read what's gone on with the product in the past. So watch that, it's gonna help you out. But for me, Thomas Parkinson and Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.